afternoon guys or morning what time is it 10 o'clock in the morning here um i'm just sort of chilling out today it's my birthday um gonna admit, i'm not really into birthday celebrations for myself i just really don't care <laughs> not miserable or whatever it's just i'm not um i don't really celebrate it at all myself uh, though uh, the kids do and april does but for me it's not really that a big deal um I'm just sat sat waiting for April to get the shopping because she's in the supermarket. Uh, what updates have we got? I did one the other day. So the, the van's going in for its next ITV. Um, I keep um and ah in whether to buy a new car. And then I look around and I see the dents in them and I see how much tax they charge here for transferring vehicles and stuff. And I just can't really justify buying one in Spain. Um... I mean, this van will get through its ITV, and the, you know, for pottering around locally, it'll last the next ten years. But I do want a nice car for for working stuff, so I think I'm going to end up with a British one. Um, see, the thing is, most of the work I do in the UK anyway uh, will involve being in the UK, so taking it backwards and forwards ain't going to be an issue. I'll, I'll drive it through France, um, but I can't really justify it here. I really can't. I think they're a bit greedy on what they charge for vehicles. That's why there's so many old vehicles, because you, you think, oh, I'll get a new car, then you look into it and think, I can't be bothered. Why do I want to give so much money away? <laughs> um, I know I sound thrifty, but I'm not on about the, the... I mean, the car prices are quite expensive as well. But you, you're talking... I'm talking about the transfer fees, the taxes, and all that sort of stuff. And I think even on a second-hand car, you're still paying these taxes. And you're thinking, why? You know, it was paid when it was bought, when it originally got purchased. You know, you, and this isn't just dealer. Um, this is person to person as well, so I'm not a fan of it. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I need a new vehicle. This one, this one's all right for potting around, but I want to go a bit further afield. So I've definitely got to get one. But like I said, I'm looking around and thinking, what what to do? Bring one from the UK? I don't know yet. I don't know. I do. I mean, I want one. And the thing is, for what I can buy this for, this old the old van, I could buy a car that's 10 years younger in the UK. That's the bizarre thing. Old vehicles hold the value here. Because like I said, people just keep hold of them because with all the taxes and everything involved in it, you can't be bothered to sell it. Uh, what else have we got going on? I was going to hire a boat. This is an interesting one. Um, but April said no. <laughs> uh, for my birthday next Saturday. Because uh, one of the things I come across yesterday is you can actually hire a small small speedboat. Um, and then when I looked into it more, you can get yachts and all sorts to fit all budgets. But I mean, it starts, I think they start, it said 40 euros. Um, but for like a couple of hours, it's a like hundred euros. So 40 euros, I assume it's like 20 minutes or something. Um, but yeah, the, you can hire them for the, an hour, two hours a day, different, different setups. So I was looking at doing that and April said, no, it's too cold, too cold to go to sea. So that's put me off that for the year. Although next year, I think we'll be on a fishing trip. We'll have to organise a fishing trip. But that might be a cheaper option, just taking our own boat out. Um, I know you, you're you not guaranteed to catch any fish because you're not going to go where the the captains of the fishing boats go. Uh, but at the same time, I'm not really fussed. It's more about just messing around, having a few beers and have it, having some fun with some friends. Um, what else have we got going on? Somebody was asking me about the Visidal servers. Um, it's a pain, I'll be honest with you, it's a pain in the backside to put it together, um, because I need more than one unit just to do the tutorials, because I need to have a second computer just to show the dialers working, the dialers don't really work well unless you've got five computers running on it, that's why when I, when I did the tutorial years ago, it was still at the call centre, where there was 45 computers sat in there, so showing how a tutorial worked wasn't really an issue. But Jay is actually sat where the computers are, not my, not in my office. So I may have a look at it, but to be honest, it's not my priority. Um, and I know a lot of guys want to use the dialers to uh, make some money, but at the same time, 
if you go onto the forums, they'll set you on up for about five hundred dollars. <laughs> No, nah, but I mean, I, I self-taught myself. I learned how to program it in about a month inside out, you know, so it did take a bit of time. Um, but at the same time, it's not difficult. It's, it's just a case of having to commit to the time, um, learning asterisks, etc. And just playing with it, you know, it's trial and error. There's a reason they didn't put a book or instruction manual for that is because they gave it away free knowing you would need tech support and that's why sometimes I get grief with people going oh this tutorial is not finished or something didn't cost you nothing go to the forums go to the forums because I've, I've got you the first part which is get it installed the configuration is a bit longer um, but then it's about another 10 different tutorials for different things so we got some free advice and complained about it some people have actually asked me the right way and I could Put them in touch with some people that can actually do it for them but they ain't going to do it for free and quite simply i'm not really interested anymore the call center i can get the dialer up and running like 30 40 minutes but at the same time showing somebody how to do it will take me probably a week with different tutorials explaining why this is this where to get that etc um it's not a priority for me um so i hope that answers your question the fitbit question someone's asking am i still using my fitbit it's actually still on my arm um but i haven't been doing as much walking as i should do but bear in mind we moved house um and i tell you what yesterday this is this fits in with it because i actually contacted the gym yesterday and the gym that's literally probably about 50 meters from my house because I thought, because I, I can see them, but the thing is, I've got to go all the way around to get it because it's, it's fenced off. Um, their website, the emails don't work. And I just thought, I can see where the Philippines get so many bad habits. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like, why have you even bothered with the website? There's no prices on it, the information's very vague, and I've got two emails, and neither of them actually work. I just disbelieve this this is this is normal but it is normal <laughs> it's normal real estate agents when i contact real estate agents when we first moved here three days later four days later you might get a contact but 90 percent of the time nothing <laughs> they don't even contact customers um yeah very very strange some of this stuff that does happen but it does remind me of the Philippines in many ways. That's what I say. And I know somebody's already mentioned that Spanish may get offended by me saying it. But a lot of the bad habits in the Philippines have come from here. Because it makes sense now. A lot of it. <laughs> Unfortunately, a lot of it does make sense. Um, I am trying to sort a trip up to Barcelona for, for a few days. But April's got a bit paranoid on major cities at the minute. Because uh, of all the issues relating to people running into things. I mean, even the, in Tolibeca, we were there yesterday. Um, they've got security bollards at the market. Now, the other funny thing with that yesterday was uh, Zoe has won. Um, it was International Children's Day yesterday. And Zoe's won the contest again. Because she's very, very good at drawing. Very good for age. And she's become a bit of an ambassador for the school. She, they've asked her to do um, Christmas cards uh, for children with cancer. They've asked her to do mosaics for the school building. She's, you know, she's she's become a bit of a, like I said, a bit of an ambassador for the school. She's, you know, and everybody seems to know her. You know, they know know her more than me. You know, at the end of the day, I can walk around and. Any child for the radius of 50 miles probably knows Zoe. <laughs> that was a bit of an exaggeration. But the but literally, you'll hear people just go, Zoe, Zoe. And you're just like, we're not even in Toyveca area. We're somewhere else. But people know her from, you know, because I think she's been in a newspaper a few times as well. Because obviously they take photos for the presentations and things. So, oh, and she's met the mayor as well. I think she's met the mayor at least... I think maybe twice now, because um, she she was doing something for the um, I think that was Children's Day last year. 
the there was like a ah oh, it was to do with uh, children with special needs. There was like a big seminar on it, and she had to go up on stage and then talk about um, whatever it was because obviously her Spanish is better than mine. Um, but she was actually doing like a reading on stage uh, with all the schools, all the different schools in the area were all there, and there's a big seminar at the um, the theatre in Torrebecca. That's what I'm saying. She's becoming a bit of a local celebrity because she, she's everywhere. You know, there's always something going on. There's, and like, she's got a little gang of friends and they're always in the same order. Have you ever seen any photos of that with them? They always go in the same order for the sequence, everything. You know, it's very strange. But even when they sit together, they're always in the same, What you know, Zoe, one friend, one friend, and then the other everywhere it's always the same sequence so I, I noticed that it. it doesn't matter what they're doing they're always exactly the same photograph whatever it's very strange they they just do it naturally it's just funny but yeah she's she's in she's loving spain um she made she made me a uh christmas uh, christmas uh, birthday card this morning and uh, i've got one off ubi as well so come down this morning and the, the christmas cards were uh, birthday cards were there um because I say I don't really celebrate my birthday. I'm not. I'm not really into it. It's. It's not. That I'm some miserable guy. I just see it as another day. It's, you know, for me, it's not a big deal. Because um, once you're 21, you're always 21. That, that, that's how it works. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's locked in at 21. So I don't know what this celebration is every year. Um, but what I, yeah, see the thing, I'm trying to think what else to say. As you can see, it's not that cold. In fact, my arm's burning from the, the sun through the window at the minute. Um, and we're nearly into December. So, loving Spain still, loving it. I would say getting work here is not as easy as a lot of people think. And some people have asked me about the call centre wages. The call centre wages are crap. They, they are what they are. They're in, they're in a... Many of them are in a dying breed. Um, cold calling is illegal uh, for a lot of people, and this is why they they can't do the canvassing that they used to do. So they're locked into their dialing lists, which are already 10, 12 years old, um, which means when they're calling, that customer has probably been called four times this week already. Um, and this is one of the things I was looking at when I went there, and I just thought... This this ain't for me, you know. At the end of the day, I'm not. I'm here to make money, and these guys ain't making a lot of money, you know. When somebody says to me they're on a good week, they made seven hundred euros. I'm like, I want to be doing a thousand a week. If I'm not doing a thousand a week, I'm not interested, you know. For this aggro, you know, constantly be, you know, you get people go, why are you calling? Take me off your call list. Blah blah blah, all day long. Yeah, 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 I mean, I know how it works, but what I'm saying is the commission rates and everything else aren't great. Um, so for me, it just wasn't worth it. Now, I know some people be quite happy on one to 2000 a month, and you can do that. They'll work, but at the same time, the people I was talking with seem to be, I don't know, around 250 a week, um, which for me isn't enough. Because I, in all honesty, I make more than that sat on my backside on my computer. Um, I mean, at, at the moment, I'm probably making two to three thousand euros a month minimum um, working from home, working part time. Um, and this is this is the thing I'll say is some of you guys that run about doing affiliates, start doing it. Start doing it. You'll you'll start some, and then you'll forget about them. You'll leave them to one side, and then you'll come back and find that you've sold five five of them over the last two months or whatever. Affiliate programs do actually work. Uh, the same as I haven't really pushed the real estate stuff lately. Um, it's the wrong time of year now, for, you know, for renting or whatever. But I mean, there's still people buying. But after their software theft crash, whatever you want to call it. Uh, with my host, I haven't really got motivated to start all over again with with that stuff because it's going to take me months to rebuild the things. But we live and learn. It's just one of those things. Um, 
I have got some interesting contracts coming up and I'm waiting to see if they'll bear fruit. If they bear fruit, it'll be interesting times because they may involve some travel, but not a lot to say on that until it actually happens. Because um, it's going to take a while to get it get it running. But certainly stuff going on. And I can see myself being in Latin, Latin America in the next 18 months, if all goes well. Um, what else is going on? April's mother's passport's now sorted, so we're now uh, sorting her paperwork out and booked her appointment for the embassy because she's going to be going out out to here probably February of next year. Um, April doesn't like people flying November, December because of the the weather in the Philippines because she didn't like it. <laughs> she, you know, because it's getting out of the Philippines. You know, we got the typhoon season and stuff, so she's like, no, better to wait till February. But also, um, there's the first, um, what do you call it? There's like a celebration in the Philippines, the death, death celebrations. So there'll be like a event relating to April's father's death. So that, that's going to happen before April's mother comes over as well. Um, plus the, the Christmas and other bits and pieces. But hey-ho, we're nearly there. It's took long enough, but that's the way it is, you know. It's not a lot you can do when things just rely on governments to do stuff for you. They want paperwork that doesn't really exist. Or the fact that the spelling mistakes on their paperwork, but they go, well, that's a different department. That's not my problem. You'll need to sort that out first. Rather than customer service base going, oh, there's a spelling mistake on your birth certificate. Okay, well, we'll, we'll get that sorted for you because it's within our government realms. But no, they don't run like a company. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it took ages, but we're nearly there. As soon as that happens and April's mother's been over, I will be in the Philippines again. I'll be heading back over for a trip. So yeah, so bear that in mind. It's just been delayed because I did promise that April's went back to the Philippines. But also Jay's coming over. Jay's coming to visit as well from the, from the Philippines as well. Um, so I think he's coming around the same time. So I might be able to travel with, with my mother-in-law, uh, which would be nice because it, it means that she's got somebody to travel with. Cause it's the first time she's been out of the country. Uh, so it'd be nice to actually have somebody with her to, to make sure you know, nothing happens on the trip. Just deal with all the issues that you get. Although I have to admit, Spain's, Spain's a lot more friendly then I find the UK with immigration, etc. Um, they're a bit more bureaucratic than. Sorry, that's unfair. They're not any more bureaucratic than the UK. They're not. That's that's my mistake. I would say France was less bureaucratic, but I would say the Spain's bureaucracy is the same as the UK. Very specific and yeah. So yeah. I apologize for that. Yeah, the UK and Spain's paperwork is very similar. Um, but at the same time, the welcoming committee at the airport is a bit more obliging than the UK. Um, but yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward to taking April's mother around here. Um, it'll also give me time to get the car because the car is going to be an important one. Because if I can actually get the visa and that sort, and it's still on the old Schengen route. I can see it, see us taking a run down to the Vatican, uh, so April's mother can see the Vatican. Cause it's great. So I'm not a religious person, but I understand the value of religion to other people. So for for her to go there or go to Lords or something, it's a big thing. For me, it doesn't mean a thing. It, I'm I'm more for me, it's architecture. It's not religion. It's architecture. Having that, I'm amount of money to spend on something is more interesting to me you know the the intricate artwork all that sort of stuff i love all that stuff but the religion side i don't even i don't even acknowledge it you know not in a negative way not in a negative way i'm just saying i'm not really not really into it i think some of that was coming from a military childhood where we seem to get pushed into every church event we used to fight. I remember having church on a Wednesday. I remember having church on the Sundays. And I remember, remember standing wondering, why am I here? 
you know, just get some droll priest just yabbering on in a very slow, boring manner. And you're just thinking, why? You know, I can understand if you're into it, that's fine. But I certainly wasn't into it. Um, yeah, because then you had the assemblies as well at school. This is the other thing. You go to church twice, but then you have, like, the assemblies. So you go for, on a Monday, you'd have an assembly, and then you'd have a priest on a Monday as well. So, yeah, that's Mondays, Wednesdays, and then Sundays, at least. You may have the odd extra day in there as well, if it's Harvest Festival or something else. So, always something religious going on. Um, I found it a bit weird, also, because when I went to Germany, uh, secondary school, because the Catholics had different education. Although, I have to admit, it was comical for us, because we, we all learn about Hindus and all sorts. But our religious teacher seemed to have had a very bad life. Um, he come from some coal mining village in Wales. And he would talk about the trauma of his childhood. <laughs> so it, it was comical in the sense that, not you know, I felt sorry for the guy. But it was almost like he was just getting... Um, therapy by telling the these like young kids about how he was locked in the boiler room and uh, sorry in the uh, coal bunker and beaten with the belt by his father and all this sort of stuff and you sit there going why is he telling us <laughs> why is he telling us and you look at the paperwork and it, you know like cause they give you old sheets and they'll be like we're talking about Judaism or something and it's completely irrelevant but he's gone off tangent um but it did make it more interesting. I've got to admit, it did make it more interesting hearing about these horror stories from Wales. Um, but, yeah. I mean, Spain's quite religious as well, but I don't know how religious. I don't know if it's changed a lot, because I don't really spend that much time on the religion. But there's a lot of religious stuff that goes on. But there's a lot of celebrations, but the um, Philippines are the same. At the same time, I do wonder if some of it's just the fact that they've always done it and not a case of um, having a strong belief. Their grandparents maybe have a strong belief. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I mean, they do seem to have some pretty busy churches. I know La Mata, uh, when there was like a big celebration, you know, Easter festival or something, the place is full. You know, people, the churches are full, um, which I haven't seen in the UK for a very long time, very long time. Don't know, although, yeah, I, I mean, myself, I, like I said, I'm not religious. I do get roped into things like weddings, baptisms, and things like that. But I respect the fact that other people are into it. And that's it. You know, at the end of the day, as long as they're not trying to convert me, I'm going along with it. But please don't try, and it, it just ends up going the wrong way. I remember a baptism a few years back. Um, I can't even remember who it was. It was that, that long ago. But it wasn't a child, it was an adult. And then you know where they go along, and they're inviting everybody down to the front to have the biscuit. Um, see, I don't even know what it's called, because I've, I've got no religious belief whatsoever. But you have to go for so many weeks before the the event, before the baptism. So I think you have to do three weeks in the church. So you've got to do a month at the church, uh, so you could actually go to the baptism. Um, so with that... I sort of got dragged into it because I, I got invited and then they, uh, yeah, yeah, that was the funny thing. We were, um, so I was invited to do this thing and I didn't like to say no, so I went along with it anyway. So we're in this church and the church, the reason it's, because I can remember it, this is the thing. They, they're very, for me it's very awkward. I'm not a person who likes people hugging me or stuff. I'm just not into all the touchy feely stuff and but these were a guy you know they, they were getting each other to turn to each other and then shaking hands and hugging each other and saying god be with you and all this sort of stuff and, and then you go god be with you as well and i'm like i didn't sign up for this stuff <laughs> this is so awkward <laughs> you know so i'm just like shaking people's hands because i can't say it because i don't believe in it you know, that's the problem with me. I'm too ethical. It's, I can't turn around and say, God be with you. I don't believe it because, you know, it, it doesn't fit in with my... Um, yeah, it's not... See, the thing is, it's not the case of... Because 
when people talk about atheism, is there is the belief that there is no God or whatever, which is actually incorrect. Because myself, it's just I do not dwell enough time on stuff I don't know, um, unless I'm learning something. But for religion, I simply have not got enough facts to actually make a decision, so I simply just don't bother. It's just I'm not a believer or a disbeliever. I simply have no information that can confirm it. In the same way you would with a, a legal case, you want evidence. So, But at the same time, I'm not really that fussed one way or the other. But anyway, so yeah, they were doing the old God, God love you and all this. I'm like, this is a bit awkward. And then they were doing the biscuit thing. And row by row, everybody's going down to the front. And I was like, no, this is enough. I ain't doing this because um, it's not my religion. So I said no. Now, bear in mind, the people behind me is probably the first 60 people have all gone down. Because obviously, you get the peer pressure. As soon as I said no... I just, like, I didn't say it. I just shook my head and just, because they, they send the altar boy up and they're sort of, like, directing you down there. And I'm like, nah, that ain't happening. Um, I, I disrupted all the <laughs> all the rhythm because the next rows, there was a lot of people just thought exactly the same. And, but now I'm the guy that's actually said it. <laughs> they're all right now because the priest, they was looking at me going, look at this guy, he's come into our house and he's disrupted the service now. Because, you know, like, because it, it was all flowing nice and going well. And then suddenly bumps into me. Oh, yeah. No, nah, it's okay. Thank you. And then four people next to me stopped. And then two people at the end. And then the next row and the next row. And you could just see them going, great. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, they invited me in. I, you know, at the end of the day, I'm not disrupting anything on purpose. But, yeah, that's religion for me. I'm not going to be sold into something to keep quiet and keep the peace because it's manipulated too often that way. I'm just quite happy just to say, it's your thing, that's fine, do what you like, but myself, I'm not really into it. Um, like April's mother, she's she's very religious, um, so taking her to the Vatican is a big thing. Um, but for me, I would love to see the architecture, you know. Um, and I'm not even going to enter the politics of the wealth and the distribution of the wealth that was collected by the church. I haven't even got into that. I'm not going to touch it. Um, but, yeah, so I'm looking forward to April's mother coming over and then going back to the Philippines. And if I'm back in the Philippines um, and you want to meet up, get in touch. Because when I'm, when I'm back home, um, we'll be... I'll probably be there for a, probably a couple of weeks. Not Probably not much longer because it's... Because so it saves me messing about with my uh, visas and stuff. Because I just want to come in, check everything's all right, look at what we're going to do with it, next construction stuff, and then head back out again. And April's now okay with traveling on her own as well. This is the other thing. Because before, she was like, I ain't going back to the Philippines without you. And I'm like, but you are you can go back if you want. There's nothing to stop you. Because she's a resident of Spain, you see. <laughs> so she's already got a residency card and everything. So she can travel back to the Philippines. It, nothing, there's nothing to stop her coming back now. And she's like, but um, what, if, what, if, what if I get stopped to immigration? It's like, what are they going to do? You've actually got your residency card. You've got a physical residency card that's a minimum of five years. Um, so before she was like, nah, I'll wait until you're traveling. But now... Because it's been three years now, it's like, I want to go back and see my friends. So I'm like, okay, you can do that. We'll, we'll get Christmas out of the way. Um, I need to sort out somebody to come and help with the, the kids. Because I'm not being funny. I'm, I'm good with kids, but they're very fussy eaters. Um, well, Obi's not too bad. I could take him to McDonald's every day. And that was a joke, by the way. I wouldn't really take him to McDonald's every day. Uh, but Zoe has her chicken nuggets and stuff a certain way and I've cooked for her before and she's like I ain't eating that very fussy on her food so I might have to draft somebody in to come in sit in the house while April's over over in the uh, Philippines but it also means that we could go at different times so April's mother will come here go back to the Philippines with all the memories of seeing the Vatican and um, seeing Spain and realizing why some of this stuff is so similar 
Um, and then April will probably follow or I'll follow because the next bit's more just a holiday. For me, it's business, actually. I need to go and sort, sort the call center out, make sure everything's the way I like it, um, finish the, the last apartment construction, and then that's my two weeks vacation. April will be more a case of save some money up here and then taking everybody out for dinner when she goes back to the Philippines for a fortnight because um, that's what they do. And, uh, and honestly, I know some people say, oh, well, you shouldn't do that, blah, blah, blah. It's what they do, and let's, let's face it, April's the one that's abroad now. Her friends do it where they go home. Everybody does it, and nobody actually complains about doing it because they all do it for each other. You know, they're, they're classmates, they're work work friends, etc. They're very close, close-knit community, so they don't mind because they're the ones with the extra cash. So if they blow it all on a holiday, that's fine. And right now, April's making got a got got a job as well, so she's got her own income now as well. Um, although she's invested that in me at the minute because I put I've invested it for her, so she's she's actually got her income going up because I'm actually investing it. Um, yeah, so give it give it six weeks. She'd actually got back the money she's put in there, um, plus. She, it'll be going up every month after that as well. Just, but it's not I'm doing anything strange or I do, I do some trading um, and I've been doing quite well out of it. I don't really want to talk about too much on it because the problem I get with talking about things like that is people then try to do it and if they don't understand it enough, they lose money. Um, myself, there's very specific trades I do and they keep paying and they keep paying and they keep paying. Um, and quite simply, it'll be like that for the next four years. Um, which is why when we've done the shopping, I'll be going back to check, check what the, the rates are, um, and preparing for some more trades for today. Doing about 10 to 20 trades a day. Um, but anyway, that's enough about that. All right, guys, take it easy and enjoy your week. I'm going to go and.